task one manipulating environment variables what we are going to do in this task we study the commands that can be used to set and unset environment variables we are using bash in the seed account the default shell that a user uses is set in this etc password file and the last field of each entry you can change this to another shell program using the command chsh change shell just abbreviated from change shell and please don't do it for this lab just do the following tasks and we can uh, have a look but before we open a terminal window it's better create a folder to condemn all the files we will need in that folder so go to documents ideas for february create a folder and call it lab02 inside lab02 uh, right click open in terminal then i have a terminal but i don't like this uh, default terminal i will use this uh, terminator so how do you from the terminator cd to that place cd to this place you click this empty space here after this lab 02 press ctrl l key on your keyboard then this uh, shop you can copy this whole stuff come to this terminator paste here now you see you come to this lab 02 folder okay now we can continue uh, task one in task one we only need to do uh, these two stuff first one use print env or print environment or this env command to print out the environment variables if you are interested in some particular environment variables such as pwd which means your present working directory you can use this uh, print env followed by the variable name or you use uh, this uh, grab string search string search engine or string search program to search those uh, variable names here we can try it here for example you, you, we print out all those environment variables to print in then you will see all this stuff and if you are interested in that uh, pwd and actually here if you check it they are not awarded uh, alphabetically. And uh, that PWD, if we just uh, try to find uh, with our naked air, uh, and see, is uh, the folder I just created because I work from there. This is the present working directory, PWD. Or you can use a, a good way print the environment then we grab dash i means case insensitive with a pwd okay now you see a pwd and the old pwd they are highlighted with a red color so this is uh, one way to find a specific environment available the second one uh, you, you you just uh, print that uh, variable name print yeah then we followed by that variable name environment variable name here you get it here so which way you prefer is up to you so we have two ways the first way just print out the environment variable name directly with this print env or we print out all of them then use this uh, string search program or command to find the interested environment available that you know actually we can uh, see that the env will validate then we can use ls to see this uh, env and we also can uh, try to find that uh, print env now you see uh, this uh, to program can be used to find all the environment variables here you will use env we list all these 
without all this stuff similar to that print ENV. Could we use ENV followed by a PWD? We will get an error, so they are some, they're not exactly the same. How to use it? You, you, you can always use dash dash help to see the options. ENV option, with this ENV, we can set the value of uh, environment available name and then run some commands you can find this stuff if no commands print the resulting environment it says set each name to the value in the environment in the environment and run the command so you can uh, read the documents by yourself. You can also Google online to find uh, examples for these commands. So this is the first one. The second one, uh, now we want to use export and unset to set or unset environment variables. This export is used to set environment, uh, environment variables and this unset is used to unset them. It should be noted that these two commands are not separate programs there are two of the bash internal commands which means we will not be able to find them outside of bash we can try it like this which export see we cannot find it and also that unset no we cannot find it if you have taken my course 372 you will know these details how do you find the internal commands? You just type a, a help, you will find all the internal commands of this shell. Here you can see that uh, unset is listed here, that uh, export is listed here. How to use it? Export for the name or value, the dash FA, and so on. You can also use help export to see how to use this export. Is it def? Dash F means refer to share functions. Dash N remove the export property from each name. So this is how to uh, use uh, export. And for that unset, you can type help unset. Then you will see this uh, unset. Dash F uh, share function share variable. Dash N treat each name as a name reference and unset the, the, the variable itself. So this is how to use this uh, unset. Now, with these two uh, built-in commands, we can set some environment variables and uh, unset them. How do we do that? Let's say uh, we want to define a variable name, just create, we first export it, say, uh, what a good, good name. Let's say seed H. Seed H maybe uh, just uh, 12 years. Then, how do you check the value of this uh, seed H? We use echo seed H. So you see its value. This is a variable name. Because it's uh, exported. So if we uh, open a new terminal, type echo again, seed H. We don't have it. So it, uh, it's just exported in this uh, current process, environment variable, export. Now we have this uh, seed H here. This is a uh, one uh, shell, right? This is a bash shell. Here you see this beam bash, we just run it. Let's close this one. This is a new, we started a new bash shell. Let's close this new bash shell. Now inside this uh, bash shell, if we type another bash, what does this mean? This means we will create a child process. 
in this child process, let's check whether we still have this uh, seed age. We can use echo seed age. You see, this in one of the variable is passed from the parent process to the child to its uh, child process. If we we just unset in this child process, and set this seed age. If we use answer, do we use uh, do we need this dollar symbol? This dollar symbol is used to uh, get the value. So if we answer, just use the name. Unset. So it's uh, now it's unset. We can use echo to verify its result. Now you see there's no result. It's unset. But it's uh, just unset under uh, under the child process. So we exit the child process. Try to echo again. Seed H. Now you see it's uh, still there, which means you unset this uh, environment variable in the child process. It does not affect the parent process because when these environment variables are passed to the child, child process, they just pass a copy. So they will not uh, affect the original variables. So this is, is about a set and an set. We can close this one, open a new terminal window here, and uh, try that echo seat H. When we close that batch, the environment, uh, environment variables set or export from that uh, shell or organ. Uh, this, uh, this is a task one, manipulating environment variables. Now, for task two, Task two is about, we ju I just demonstrated task two as well. Passing environment variables from parent process to child process. Here in this task, we study how a uh, child process gets its environment variables from its parent. In Unix, fork creates a new process by duplicating, duplicating the coding process. Those students who have taken my 3.30 should know how to use this fork function to create child process. The new process referred to as the child is an exact duplicate, exact duplicate of the coding process referred to as the parent, which means it, uh, it's an exact duplicate or it's a parent process. However, several things are not inherited by the child. What are those differences? You can check the manual, use this uh, command man. And in this uh, task, we would like to know whether the parents' environment variables are inherited by the child process or not. So we just want to use a program to verify this doubt. Again, I would like to come to this uh, terminator Copy this address. Come to that folder. Now, this time we want to, uh, if you want to know how to use my uh, fork, just my fork. This is a function provided by Linux. You can just see this Linux programmer's manual, uh, the manual. How do you use it? No parameter and uh, the return the PID. You can read this stuff. If that PID re return PID is zero, then it's a parent process. If it's a non non zero, it's the child process. You can check this uh, return value here. Return value on success, the PID of the child process is returned in the parent, and zero is returned in the child. 
Oh, sorry, I just uh, make the conversely. Zero is returned in the child. On failure, negative one is returned in the parent. And no child process is created. That is how to uh, create the child process and access is PID. You can also see uh, related functions here. Pipe, wait, clone, exit, we exit, and so on. Let's create this one. Type Q here. Press Q to quit. Press H for help. Now we want to uh, tell this program to use this program to uh, verify our doubt here. This program is uh, provided on uh, GitHub. Um, it's here two labels. Pay attention to these two labels. The program first, this part is the head file. And this one is used to access the environment variables of this program, passed to this program when we run this program. Here, there is a fun function print M is used to print out the environment uh, variables. You can see in C language, we can use the variable to access those uh, environment variables. Print out. Here, in this main function, we create, first we define the PID or child process, then we use this uh, fork to create a child process. If the return value of child PID is zero, because zero, we are inside the child process here. As we discussed in 3.30, this program, when it runs, it will gener generate a new process, is the child process. And the child process code until this part is exactly as the parent pro process. But after this, here, this part, these two sentences only runs by the child process. And this default is the parent process, which means this axis zero is exit, uh, is, and this sentence is exited by, executed by the parent process here, parent process, child process. First, uh, we find the program and uh, compile it here. What is our program? Go up, you see the code and see the reference. The reference is just a PDF uh, copied here in case the website is done, we still be able to access it. And the code here, which one is, is that code? I think it's this one. ENV, EX, yeah. No, this is not a... The code, courses, colleague, P2C, parent to child, I think it's this one, P2C, yeah. So how do you download all this code? A quick way you learn uh, those students had taken uh, other courses to know how to download. Come to the homepage at S450, click this code, you can download this zip file and unzip it. We, Use uh, git clone, copy this uh, this address. Come here. We would like uh, to go to the parent folder at is 450, which means this idea is 450 folder. It will contains all the code of uh, course companion website. So we type git clone, paste. Oops. Git clone. I need to copy this one. Paste here, press enter. Okay, now uh, it's uh, downloaded. Have LS, you see that uh, IDS 450, that code. You can use uh, the tree command. If your tree command is not installed, it will show it's not installed and I ask you to use sudo apt install tree. Here I, I installed this tree command. Come to this lab tool, you see uh, lab zero tool, you see the code and uh, the reference. Okay, then we can use this, uh, this GUI interface. Come to this 450, labs, 
lab 02, code, control A, control C, you want to copy everything, come to our lab 02, control V, paste here, everything is here. Now, in the terminal window, you go to lab 02, lab LS, you see those are four files. Now we want to compile this p2c dot c. We use a gcc p2c dot c dash o p2c. That p2c green is the executable file. Now let's uh, check the lab. What we are going to do? Compare around the following program. Describe your observation because the output contains many strings, you should save them, save the output in your files, like this. But it uh, uses a dot out. If you didn't specify the executable file name, it will use a default file name, is this a dot out. I can show you. If you don't specify the output file name, it will generate the default executable program named as a dot out. So the good way always specify your executable file program name to make it more readable. Because otherwise when you compare other program, it will overwrite the previous one. So let's remove that one, a dot out. In this program first, when we uh, save it, actually, it save all those environment variables for the child process, right? Because the parent process is uh, comment, commented out for this uh, parent process. So then we can uncomment them and uh, see whether we can save them together. But let's uh, run it. P2C currently, uh, it only prints out the, those variables, environment variables of the child process. Here you see these uh, processes, uh, these uh, environment variables. And you can, you can also see this one. This is the program name. We want to save it, child. Now, we also want to save all the parent process environment variables. So we need to modify the program first, uh, comment out of the child process print in, and uncomment the parent process print in, then compare and run it again, save the file and compare to the file with this diff command. So actually uh, you, a uh, good way is better you Keep this P2C, move P2C, give it a, a good name. Let's say uh, P2CC, the child of P2C, and P2CP, the parent of P2C. You type LS, you have P2CC, this is the child of P2C. Now, we need to modify this uh, program. You can use a stop here followed by p2c dot c. Now this time we comment out the print in sentence from this child process and uncomment the line of the parent process, can you save it? You save, just close it. Now we compare it again, but this time we give it a, another name. GCC, P2C dot C dash O, we call it P2CP, the parent process of P2C. Then we run this uh, program P2CP and save it into a, save those uh, variable name. If you run it, you can see uh, this one. So the good way would be uh, we need to we run that P2CC, P2CC, and overwrite that child environment variables. 
then we run this p2 cp say it's a parent now we use diff command to compare this child and the parent you can see that only differs the program name here actually there is a GUI uh, file compiler called melt here it's not installed we type sudo apt install this melt yes then we can use this melt to compile that uh, child parent You see, uh, it only shows the difference highlighted here. What other variables, environment variables, they have the same value. All right, that's it. This is uh, now we can answer this question. This is doubt. The parents' environment variables are inherited by the child process. Yes, but it, except uh, one variable you see that variable is the program name is that uh, this one program name the different oh this uh, is uh, this is task two now for task three environment variables and this exec ve In this task, we said how environment variables are affected when a new program is executed. We are this uh, exec v. The function exec v calls a system call to load a new command and execute it. This function never returns which means the new process is created instead the calling process text data bss stack are overwritten here they are overwritten by that of the program loaded essentially exec v runs the new program inside the calling process we are interested in what happened to the environment variables are they automatically inherited by the new program. So this one review question, uh, I put it here, there was a, oops, put it here, task three. Now, please compare down the following program and describe your observations. The program simply execute the program called this one user being new we know we just practiced this one it's used to print out the environment variables for the current process here it will just print out the environment variables of this program when we run it this is the first step step one step two change the invocation we exec ve in line one here to the following describe your observation now this time we have a uh, we have a uh, environment but uh, step one there's no environment this time we have a uh, environment and please draw your conclusion regarding how the new program gets its environment uh, variables so let's uh, try it that program, I think it's this one, ENV EX. So we can use a sub L, ENV X dot C. Okay, you can check it here. This is the first line of head files and uh, global variables, of V0, of V1, yes, no. Now you see uh, this sentence. No, it's this one. It's just step one, so we can compare and run it. 
then uh, we will come back to modify it to step two. So then we can add it now. But we comment it out at the VE. Again, with the same. Yeah, we certainly you can use that uh, print env and arc v and uh, this uh, environment. But uh, for step one, we comment out this one. This is for uh, you can make it uh, more readable. Step one. This one is. Uh, Step two. Now we can compare and run it. Again, give it a good name. Dash O was a good name. We could have quit ENV yeah, one. Right? Step one. Then we go back to modify that program. Comment out step one, and comment step two, control S, save it. Then this time, we create a MVX2, step two. WLS, we have two MVX. Now we can run it. When we run it, you will get a, the output of the environment variables. Oh, the process of this uh, program. Type in. Rex one here. Uh, we didn't see those stuff printed out, so let's check this. Uh, this one. So why it's uh, not uh, printed out? Let's try in Rex two. In Rex two, we can see all the stuff. But in Vax one, we see nothing. So what the problem? Here, in Vax one, nothing show up. In Vax two, it show up with uh, the environment uh, white boss. Now, the only difference is this uh, parameter here, the third parameter. So what does that mean? You can use man exit VE to find that third parameter here. This is the third parameter. The third parameter you, you can see is called MVP. So what does MVP mean? Scroll down, you will see that MVP, what it means. Return value. Not examples. Oops, I need to go back. How do, how do I go back? You can press your K key or you press H to see how do you go up. If I want to go up screen by screen, press H, you will see a if I want to forward or backward one window, just B or F. Uh, I want to quit this one. Help, just quit this. Help. Then I type a B backward one screen. Come back here. Try to find the description of this one. Here. MVP is an array of strings conveniently of the form key equals value just like the environment uh, variables, which are passed as environment to the new program. Both the ArcV and EMP must be terminated by a null window. That's why with this uh, ArcV1 null, we have only two, right? This is an array. We have two elements inside this array, and it must be terminated by a null pointer here. The last one, we need a Specify no here. And the argument vector and environment can be accessed by the code program's main function is defined like this. 
So which means this MAP is used to pass those key value pairs to this process to this process. And uh, the first case, step one, is no, we pass nothing. So that's why we print out nothing. It has no environment variables because it's uh, cleared by this one, we use a no. The second uh, step two, this environment, we know this variable is used to access all the environment variables. It's a global variable. So that's why it print out for its uh, environment variables in, in step two. So these are the difference and why. Because here this null, we pass to nothing. And uh, which means this uh, function, it use this third parameter to pass the environment variables to this uh, process. to the process of this one, not the process of this whole program. It's the process of this program being executed. Don't uh, mess up. For example, here when I run this uh, NVX2, it brings us these uh, environment variables. These environment variables are not the environment variables of, of that, uh, oops. as we, we learn, it, it is. Because when we execute this one, this one, it will replace, replace the, this NVX2, which means that they are the same here. This execute we cause a system call to load a new command or program here we load this one and execute it and this function never returns and no new process is created so it's the self it's just in two stages the second stage the calling process the text data bss and stack are overwritten by that of the program loaded is overwritten by this one this nvx2 is overwritten by this invo program so essentially this one runs a new program inside the coding process. So the same as in Invex one. Inside Invex one, it's also overwritten by this env command. Now let's uh, have a look on task four. Environment variables and uh, system. We know system can be used to call other programs. Here in this task we study how environment variables are affected when a new program is executed via the system function. We just learned how to use executeve to execute a, a, a program. Now we want to use a system to execute a program. During the lecture, we know executeve is a safe way to execute another program, but the system is not. This function is used to execute a command, but unlike executeve, which uh, directly executes a command, executeve executes that uh, program directly, but the system actually executes this bin share first, uses this dash c, dash c means uh, the command, you follow the by the command name or program name and it executes this one first. But this one, we know, it may not be secure. And asks the shell to execute the command. So it asks a, a third party to do the job. And the third party could be uh, vulnerable. And if you look at the implementation of the system function, you will see that it uses this exec error to execute this bin sh and the execute error calls execve. So it come back to the execve, passing it to the environment variables array. So therefore using the system, the environment variables, error 
the cooling process is passed to the new program. Now you see this some um, uh, implicit behavior is the environment variables L, the cooling process is passed to the third party, this bean share. We can demonstrate with this one. Compare and run the following program to verify this. We use this system function. How do we verify it? There is a third party. First, let's uh, compare right to see what, what we could have. We know this, uh, this inv command or program is used to print out the environment variable. So the program or, or with itself because itself is a program. Here, this program, uh, let's say, uh, I think its name is core sys. We can use a sub error. Open it, core sys, like this one. All right, now we can compare and run this one. GCC core sys dash O core sys. So we have a core sys program now. And we run it, courses. You see these uh, environment uh, variables now. How could we identify that third body from this uh, environment uh, variables? We see the program is uh, courses. So, how could we? find anything uh, from this list of environment variables to identify the third party. What do we have any idea to find this uh, third party? It causes SH, and SH is not this. Uh, is not our batch. We we can uh, use ls dash l find that which SH is this one. Is a uh, link is uh, currently pointed to this uh, dash, right? So if you uh, we can pass any environment variables to this one, then we can identify this being a dash. How could we do that? As we just demonstrated, we can use export to export some environment variables to the child process. Or if we use a, let's check a command, let's see whether we have a command, or we are find the versions, version, no. Let's see, we use a bash. This is a bash version, the information of this uh, bash. And there should be some uh, difference between this uh, bash and this dash. So this is the uh, here is a bash, here is a dash. Bash it supports this dash dash version, but this uh, dash it does not support this uh, dash dash version.
one way we can uh, verify this. First, we export uh, environment variable. Let's say create evidence. Evidence and equals the evidence. Uh, let's create a seed share. Then we run this uh, program to see whether we can see this uh, evidence seed share. Courses. Suddenly you can use a grab command to grab those uh, environment variables. Right? We grab that. Uh, EBI, every dance. You see it? See it here. And it's passed from this batch to that, uh, to this uh, program. Just add the state here, the environment variables of the calling process is passed to the new program. Any questions? Okay, if there is no questions, let's go to uh, the last task. Task nine, we demonstrated during the class capability leaking. First, let's uh, open this uh, Program. What's name? Caplic. Okay, this is a program, and you see there are some difference. There are only three header files. We have five header files. Others just the same because it's a revision from this program. This program, this task is used to show the principal list privilege. To follow the principal list which strategy ID programs often permanently relinquish their root privileges if such privileges are not needed anymore. Moreover, sometimes the program needs to hand over its control to the user. In this case, root privileges must be revoked. The strategy ID system core or function can be uh, used to revoke the privileges. According to the manual, you can check the strategy ID function core manual. Sets the effective user ID of the coding process. If the effective UID of the caller is root, the real UID and the saved set user UID are also set. Therefore, if the, the set UID program with the effective UID zero, zero means the root, the root uh, ID. Course set UID N, the process will become the normal process with all its UIDs being set to N and the normal user's ID. You will set a normal user's ID. When revoking the privilege, one of the common mistakes is capability leaking. The process may have gained some privileged capabilities when it's still privileged. When the privilege is downgraded, but the program does not clean up those capabilities, they may still be accessible by non-privileged process. In other words, although the effective user ID of the process becomes non-privileged, 
but the process is still privileged because it, because it possesses privileged capabilities. So we can try this again, even though we have tried this one uh, during the lecture. We compare the foreign program Chinese owner to load, then make it as a set UID program and run the program as a normal user describe what you have observed. Will the file be modified and explain your observation? So we need to create a etczz file first. Here actually uh, it uh, is created uh, here, so we don't don't need to uh, create manually. It says this one suppose is an important system file is owned by root with permission. This one before running this program, you should create the file first. We still need to create first. Okay. Here we simulate the tasks conducted by the program. This place we open this uh, privileged file. Then we uh, sleep one second to simulate the tasks of this program. Then after the task, the root privilege are no longer needed. So it's time to relinquish the root privileges permanently we use using this set UID system core. And with this get UID to return the real UID. Then here the problem comes here in the parent process. Here we just exit the parent process. With this fork, we create a child process. At this point, this program becomes unprivileged. Certainly the child process is an unprivileged program. Now assume that the child process is a compromised malicious attacks attackers have injected the following statements in this uh, process here. Then the chat process can write some malicious data into that privileged file, even though currently it's not a privileged program. As we demonstrated in the classroom, uh, in the lecture, we construct the input to a hacker to exploit this one a little bit. Here you just uh, put the code here to write some malicious code. So how do we verify this one? First we check the etc, this is the, I have one over there. As a demonstration, I will remove, it, uh, remove that one. We need to do to remove because it's a privileged one. Otherwise I cannot remove it. You can see it. It is easy, easy, easy. Remove red protect uh, regular file, yes. Permission denied because I am not root. So I need to do remove it is easy, easy, easy. Okay, now it's removed. Follow this uh, guide. We create that file. Sudo touch etc. This is just uh, create an empty file and check its access rights. HL etc. This is so you need to highlight this part. The root owner owned by root here. The this uh, the first dash means it's a regular file. This uh, three letters means the owner's access right. The root can read and write this file. It's not an executable file, so these three groups, the, the last letter or, or just a dash. Here, the second group, the second group is, a, is access rights of the file group, is a, the root group. The last group is anyone else. You see anyone else can read this file. For example, we can use a cat. I'm anyone else. This is it. Nothing inside because I just created an empty file. Now we verified that uh, we verify as a normal user, I cannot uh, put anything inside. Echo, I want to write something. Into this is it. Oops. 
apps. ETC, ZZZ. I'm not permitted. Permission denied. Now, this program, let's run it. First, we compare it. Caplic dash O. Caplic. We have a Caplic now. We run it. Caplic. It says cannot open this is etc zzz at this place because currently this uh, colleague is not a set UID program. It's just a normal program. That's why we get this uh, this uh, error. Cannot open this file for write because here is trying to open it for write. You would ju it's just uh, open it for read. Then it should. Uh, uh, this program should succeed. Now let's uh, change it to a uh, set UID program. First, we need to uh, change the root. So do change the owner to root. Now oh, this is a cap leak. Then we change it uh, set it as set UID program. Uh, change the mode 4755. Public. We use LS to verify this one. See it. Owner is root and uh, the airspeed is set. Now it's a set UID program. Public. So we can run it. Now this time it uh, succeeded and it uh, paused about one second to simulate this one. Sim sleep. Simulate the tasks. Now we can see whether this malicious data is written into that ZZZ file. As any user can read that file, so I just use cat to read it. You see the malicious code is there, which means this is a vulnerable program just demonstrated this capability leaking because it uh, didn't close that file before it uh, relinquish the root privilege. So this is the task nine, use a program to demonstrate it. During the class, we just use a construct, construct input to, to exploit this vulnerability. And we will learn next week to construct input data to exploit this kind of vulnerability.